Hi guys, today we're going to talk about colored pencils, um, how to use them, how to take care of them, how to blend them, and how to use them with other media. Uh, first of all, I'm showing you my color book because before, and it's actually called color book, I use it for a lot of different color tests. Uh, before you do anything with your colored pencils, you should test them. So that's exactly what this is. I'm testing all my different colored pencils. Um, at first, I just tested them like this, right? In sort of no, no order. And then I went back and did it again and put some of the colors uh, close together um, in terms of hue. So when you test your color pencils, this is how you want to do it. You always want to try to make a gradient. So this one's very light. So you have to press harder. And then as you're testing it, right, try to release the pressure. So this allows you to see how dark and how light this colored pencil can actually be. I'll do a darker one. Here's another one. So the reason we do this gradient is to get an idea of the range. And you may have to practice a little bit uh, to learn how to release the pressure while you're using the pencil. And actually, while you're using it, press harder and press lighter. So it may take a little practice to get there, um, but it's well worth doing. So personally, I would go through all the colored pencils I'm thinking of using and test them in the exact same way. Uh, if you're planning on using two different brands, so I'm experimenting here, by the way, with Prismacolor and a brand called Tombow, uh, I would test both of them. If you're planning on using them together, which I will be, right, these two different brands, I would definitely test that uh, somewhere in your sketchbook as well and see if they go well together and so on. Okay, let's talk about blending, different ways to do blending. I have two uh, lilac colors I'm going to start with. Again, I'm combining the two brands um, just because I enjoy doing that. And I'm obsessed with certain colors from certain brands, so I'm always switching it up. Okay, so people are always confused about how to blend uh, color pencils. The secret to blending color pencils is layering. See what I'm doing? I'm layering one color on top of another. So you can't uh, use your finger to smudge it. Um, you can't use a little blender like we use for our graphite. It just doesn't work. Colored pencils are very waxy, so nothing's going to happen if you attempt to blend them in that manner. So you achieve blending in colored pencil through layering and change in pressure, right? Pushing harder, pushing lighter as you go. And it's very, very subtle. Let's throw a blue in there just for fun, see what happens. And so what starts to happen is a little bit like in watercolor. Uh, you don't want to make it too thick, the colored pencil, because you want to use the light of the paper below. You want the light of the paper below to shine through. But the other thing that can happen when you're layering like this is that the two colors can combine to make a whole new color. Let me add blue in here just for the heck of it. So this is one way, combining through blending. I also wanted to show you two interesting little tools that you may be interested in, absolutely not required to use colored pencils to use these tools. Um, but the first one is called a Prismacolor Colorless Blender. And what it does is it combines two waxy colored pencils together and makes it seem more like one color. So I layer first before I use that tool. Um, but you don't have to, right? So I could lay down uh, some color pencil right here and have it be just one color. And what the colored, colorless blender does is it smooths it out a bit, right? So it gives you a more sort of smooth tone as well. I particularly like to use it over two or three colors together. 
Um, the other little tool that you might enjoy, it's called a colored pencil blender pen um, by Finesse. It has a bold tip and a fine tip. And when you open it, you'll see it looks much like a brush. And when we apply this, what's interesting about this is it works with the waxy colored pencil and almost makes the color appear to be almost like watercolor paint, right? It's called a colored pencil blender pen. I personally like both of these tools. I don't rely on them uh, that often, but now and again, I use them, especially the finesse, if I want to get a sort of watercolor look. So let me lay label this as well. And see all the different effects, right? So on the top, um, we just have layering. In the middle, I've used the color, colorless blender pencil. And on the bottom, I've used that finesse pencil, which is a color pencil blending pen. Okay, a quick word before I move on to the larger drawing. How do we sharpen colored pencils? Um, you can sharpen them with a mechanical sharpener. I do actually have one uh, right here. I'm sure you've seen these before, right? Um, they're actually not that expensive. They're about $20 and they last a really long time. This one is by Exacto. Um, here's the key when you're sharpening colored pencils. Be very gentle. I'm holding it very lightly. Do not jam it in or your colored pencil will break. Uh, a less expensive route to go is this lovely little, uh, it's called a three-in-one pencil sharpener. So it sharpens uh, three different sizes of pencil, uh, two different sizes of graphite pencil here, and then the yellow one is the colored pencil sharpener. And I've had this for years. It works quite well, but you have to be very gentle, right? Very gentle with it because you don't want it to break. All right, see that? So let me show you how in this drawing um, I can actually add different colors, different colored pencils uh, to create layering effects. Um, a lot of this is already done, right? But there's still some blank space. I'm going in, uh, first of all, with uh, Spring Green by the Tombow Company. Look how I'm pushing harder on the left side a little bit, right? On the left side of the leaf. And I'm using the white of the page because we want the white of the page to shine through. It's just like drawing or watercolor, really. So the highlights come from the white of the page. So now I'll go in with a different color. Um, this is called Vigorous Green by Tombow. And it's quite bright, right? So I'm just gonna use it just to highlight a little bit um, to make things pop, just a little bit. Very judiciously, right? Because it's pretty bright. Uh, what else? So see the outside edges of this, right? The uh, area that has blue. For that, I've been using um, a Tombow pencil, Celeste Blue. Don't have to, I'm just letting you know. And when I'm filling in the background, notice again that I am using a lot of pressure right now, but I'm lifting the pressure as I get further away from the leaf. And I'm going to do it here as well and leave some white so the white of the paper shines through, right? So I'm changing the pressure, just like we do with a graphite pencil. I'm going to go back in on top of it with a lighter blue, just in some areas, not everywhere. You really don't want the colored pencil to become completely flat, right? You don't want to press too hard or it'll just be a really, really flat sort of waxy mess. Um, and it won't look very interesting. Uh, this area here, the flower is, a lot of it is done as you can see, but I actually want to play with that a little bit more uh, and kind of brighten up the pink uh, just a little bit. So this needs to be finished. I'm gonna go in here with a pink and work on that a little bit and then go in with a very light pink on top of that. And I'm leaving some white, as you can see, right? So the white of the paper shines through. Then here's a trick. 
I'm going to get a very, very bright pink colored pencil and do the tips. And it really makes it pop, as you can see. And it goes right over those other pinks. See that? Um, you can see I've already done it here. I'm going to emphasize it a little bit more. And, of course, you don't have to do this. Just an idea, right? I like to do it because I really like the tips to pop out like that. You can add a little bit here and there. Um, what about the blue around it? So I'm going to go back in, uh, get my Celeste Blue. That's what the color is called that I'm using here. And I'm going to go in over this area. I've already got laid some down, right? And I'm going to do a little bit more, just like I was doing over here, right? So using a lot of pressure and then a little as I get further away. How do you decide where to use more pressure and where to use less? That's up to you. So if you're doing a very realistic drawing, right? Obviously you wanna look at the light source. Mine is more fantastical. I like to call it hyper real, uh, surreal, maybe like Alice in Wonderland style. So I'm not really that bothered uh, about whether it's perfect or not. In fact, I want the light sources to be ambiguous. I actually want the plants to be ambiguous as well. I don't want anything necessarily to be perfectly identifiable. So notice what I'm doing. I'm going back in with two other different blues on top of this, but taking care to always leave white. I'm gonna go in here so I can make this sort of pop, right? See that blue next to that pink? And again, I'm releasing the pressure as I get further away. And you just have to play with this, you guys. You know, you'll decide what works best for you, of course. If you're fading to white, I call it, like I'm kind of doing here, you always want to fade it. You always want to make a gradient. So as you get far away and you're in the area that you want to leave white, be sure to release the pressure, right? Don't have it just go straight from dark uh, to light, which is kind of happening here, right? So we kind of want to soften that gradient a little bit so it looks more natural. Uh, let me work on the green areas a little bit here again. So I'm going to go back in with this sort of opal green, fill in some of this. And again, as I'm doing this, I'm again playing with the pressure, right? Uh, pushing harder, pushing less as I go along. Um, here's my crazy color green again. I'm just going to pop in a little bit of that on this one as well, just to make it kind of pop out. Okay, so you kind of get the idea. I haven't actually used the colorless uh, blender pencil or that um, finesse colored pencil blender pen on this, but I could, right? I'll just use in a little area to show you. Now, I think this area is already quite soft, so I don't really need it to be softened much more. Um, I worked hard with the layering to make it soft. So it doesn't make much difference in this one because it's already very soft. So I hope this little demo inspires you, you guys. Uh, definitely try it yourself. Um, have fun with it. And hopefully this will help you uh, get a start. See you next time. Bye.